I've always had a very loving eye, I guess is the best way to describe it for exotic cars. And uh, I've got a lot of designs that I've just, you know, scribbled, whether it's on the floor, whether it's on a piece of paper on the back wall. Um, you know, I've always been very passionate about that shape and design. I love driving fast. Um, I, I know how to handle a corner. And uh, so what's, what's best than driving a Ferrari is building your own car that would beat a Ferrari. I got started in June of 99. Basically was able to finally talk my wife into letting me quit my job, go draw cars in the kitchen and make a living for our little family. So uh, my son Drew was to be born and two weeks after he was born, I quit my job and started my business. 23 years later, here we are. My wife Charity works with me the entire time that we've been in business. My son Drew just started working for me. He was working at Boeing for a while and now is uh, working in the door handles. And of course, my lovely daughter Bailey, she does all of the social media, uh, new product development on the clothing. And uh, yeah, she's, she's, a, she's a badass. All right, so here we are in my showroom. This is a 1967 Chevelle we call Caldura. Caldura has a turnkey twin turbo LS7. Uh, it's a beautiful car. It's built into a unibody. Uh, the interior is a beautiful terracotta. Of course, it's got our kick-ass door handles. And we'll just uh, open her up and show you the magic inside here. It just got back in from Boston. We're gonna do a couple little uh, tune-up things, make sure everything's torqued down. And I uh, think we're gonna take this thing to auction for the customer. They're ready to build another car with us. So that's always exciting. And uh, we love it when people decide to do another one. So if you ain't got one, get one. Let me show you the Pantera. So this one is a good friend of ours, Ernie Bach Jr. Uh, this one is a 72 Pantera uh, built by DeTomaso. These were actually available to be purchased back in the day at your local Mercury dealer. So they're not a Ford product, they're actually a European car, uh, but they do use a Ford motor. This one in particular was really kind of a trick piece because every panel on the car except for the rear deck lid skin has been changed up. We've uh, dropped the center of the hood, 3D printed some new grills, and of course, a lot of the equipment around here is what it takes to build something kick-ass like this. Of course, you can see the fender flares. This is done on our uh, English wheels. We've got a lot of uh, work uh, done with all of our bead rollers. Uh, shrinker stretchers, of course, is just a main go-to tool. It'd be any Bailey tools? Bailey? Hmm. As a matter of fact, they would be. <laughs> something else that was really a big challenge for us on this car was to make the owner of the car fit. Uh, Ernie is six foot two, six foot three. So we cut the car in half. And of course, because we had a custom built chassis by the Roadster Shop, which gave us an additional four inches of length in the wheelbase, we are able to take another set of doors and stretch these ones out, which gave us the ability to put a six foot five, six foot six guy in the car, which is really, really cool. These are some wheels that I designed. They're built uh, two piece, uh, B forged, built specially. These good friends of ours did these that I designed up. I used a lot of the uh, styling cues that would be on the original Pantera wheels as the opening of this uh, design exercise, but of course I made them very open and light. We uh, got rid of the uh, 351 Cleveland. This is a Coyote 5.0 with a Borla 8 stack injection. And that's the old sock valve covers for a single overhead cam 429, 428, whatever it was. Um, those are built by Hollywood Hot Rods. Troy Ladd's a great friend of ours and uh, has always treated us very well to do a set of those valve covers. Um, they're pretty uh, tricky on these Coyote 5.0s, but with the use of an adapter, uh, they look beautiful in here and they're very fitting to the car. The Borla 8 stack injection, again, just really gives it kind of that timeless look. Um, the car runs beautifully, full stainless exhaust, custom built headers, and of course the Roadster Shop chassis is second to none. These guys uh, do a really nice job. This is all push rod cantilever with reservoir shocks and it's fully adjustable. So all of the interior panels have all been done custom out of steel. And of course the bottom side of the trunk lid uh, has all been uh, paneled in and closed up so we don't have any blind spots or open cavities between understructure and outer skin. When I'm selling a client a design, you know, basically I find out what, what they like, what kind of colors they like. They want it real low, do they want it a little bit more conservative. Am I getting really radical? You know, a lot of times within five minutes, I've already got a pretty good idea of what direction we're going on the car. Within 10 minutes, I'm already excited to put the rendering together and to be able to produce that car for them. And in my mind, I'm already driving the car up and down the street. I can already imagine and visualize what that car looks like I'm just jonesing to get to a piece of paper and start drawing it up because as soon as that's done, that's just one step closer to having it on the road. You know, the custom body working and painting, 
Metal shaping, of course, has always been a very big key. That's where everything starts after the rendering. You got to be able to put, you know, the metal to the panel, you know, sort of speak, I guess. And uh, to be able to bend that metal and make it perfect and do that, that, that skill, it takes a lot of uh, training. It takes great equipment and uh, a lot of concentration, so. Well, you know, I think I would probably defer to the shop manager, Mr. William Lockwood. Hey, he's a badass. So here's where the magic happens. This is where we uh, get Dave's drawings down off the wall and build them into cars. This is our little tool area. One of my favorites, this Bailey shrinker stretcher. You can uh, put thumbnail dies in any one of these machines and be there for hours where this thing will take you about seven minutes. So I really, really like it. Got the old pex. So what is this, World War II here? That is World War II. <laughs> I think right here it says, well, 1920. All right. Just having a tool that can stick around that long is so cool. Oh yeah. How many fingertips have we I think lost? We've had two here, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's a reminder. That's just a reminder for anybody who gets near it. Pull max. Um, with what I call a die a day. I mean, everything you run into, you basically end up having to build a new die. We have a, a quite the slew and we need more organizing for all the ones we have. The Dual vertical uh, bandsaw band here. Yeah, this is a goodie. Couple good speeds on it. It's all variable so you can uh, cut anything you need to there. This little unit, everybody should have one and probably does have one. This started as a kit. Back in the day, I think this got built about two years before I started here. So it's wow. it's about, uh, it can drink. Yeah. Uh, a little straight one, a little finger break. And then we got this magical monster. Yeah, this is my dog right here for <laughs> sure. We've made a couple of different dies, bend different, different radiuses and long, short, everything in between. All the factory stuff that it come with allows us to do little tiny boxes, big boxes, and stuff that you just cannot bend on any other unit. Yeah, this thing's a game changer. Uh, upper bed rails on, a, on yeah, the early Chevys, where you gotta wrap that all the way around. I mean, there's no other way to do it. So, hiding back in the room here, we got this big old Powell hammer. We put it in this room just because it's loud as can be. <laughs> yeah, you can hear this thing down the street. Yeah, um, it's a good day when you get it, when you've gotta really form something up and and can work your magic because because there's stuff that it's just fun. Yeah, I mean it's just fun to just these. get a plan and dream something up, and then all of a sudden, okay, let's let's go to form and sub. Yeah, something that I'm trying to do to keep the uh, industry going. Obviously, this is my livelihood, and there's a lot of people that really like to build cars, but they're getting extremely hard to find. We've been working for a couple of years with uh, some very good friends of ours at Lincoln Technical Institute. Uh, primarily the uh, Denver campus, which is 280,000 square feet. We have now 10,000 square feet of the Kindig Academy. We're very excited. These are six week courses. We're only vetting uh, in 12 people per course. There's two instructors and we'll have other uh, people coming in doing some of the training. We're gonna do a lot of different aspects throughout the entire industry. There's a major shortage of people that know how to build cars or that are willing to learn how to take it to the next level. You know, it's kind of cool, uh, Bailey found us about the same time we were looking for Bailey. We are really trying to expand our ability to do other sheet metal fabrication. And of course, you know, a lot of the equipment that we have in, in house is from Bailey. And uh, you know, we've just worked really well with those guys. And of course, when it comes to all of the stuff at the college, I think 85% of the tooling in there is actually from Bailey. I think we cleaned out everything they had at SEMA and then some, so uh, that was pretty cool to, to be able to get it in there. It's all set up really, really well. And uh, you know, this is gonna be a lot easier to teach the, uh, the next generation of fabricators how to do it properly by having the right tools. You know, I think Bailey has really done a great job of taking the reins and instead of keeping it such a secret of how to bend metal that they've actually encompassed everybody that wanted to learn about it and then showcase them as well. Showing new techniques, coming up with new equipment, new dies, and making sure that everybody knows about it. I mean, that's how you're gonna win the battle. Uh, back in the day, everybody knew this bus as green money, uh, but this in particular is a Barn Door Deluxe 1953. What we've done with this one is, uh, of course, upgraded all the suspension. One-off wheels built by Evod, designed by myself. Redone the interior with all leather, done by uh, our good friends over at So Fine in Denver. 
And of course the body and paint is all done here at Condigate Design, all of the metal finish was all done here. The motor is a 2376, it's 176 horsepower, dual carb, 48 Webers, and uh, it scoots. And of course we had to do the rarest of rare convertibles. This one in particular is a 1950 Volkswagen Hebmuller. Heb Miller was a coach builder just outside the Wolfsburg factory from 1949 to 51. They made 669 examples of the Heb Miller Cabriolet. What's different about this car is it has a deck lid on the back. It looks a lot like the front. It has a very small jump seat, no quarter glass, and the top folds down inside the body, not on top of the back of the car. So it's just a really beautiful car. Uh, extremely rare. Uh, this one is a 1950. Put it on a 1970 and up standard chassis so it's a ball joint front end that's been narrowed. Disc brakes again all the way around and a Vanagon automatic transmission to pump out the 176 horsepower uh, and basically the same motor and uh, transmission setup as the bus. Problem for me is I have a very active imagination. I really like to have more than 10 cars to build at any given time. There's at least 25, 30 cars in here uh, that we're working on at all times. I really wanted it this way. Um, to be honest with you, I would actually double the size again if I had the ability, because I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> Plans for the future for me, we've done very, very well with my carbon fiber Corvette uh, program, and uh, you know we're working on four different body styles, two different drivetrains to begin with. One's electric, one's uh, gasoline and uh, we've had great success with those. Uh, in fact, overwhelmingly great success. So I'd like to actually change it up to where we can continue to do the one-off cars, you know, the one-of-ones, um, but also to have this, uh, this full turnkey line, I think is an important part for us to look at the future. You know, this is a great way to bring somebody in that maybe doesn't have as much experience, years of experience, but they can easily be taught how to build a $400,000 car and do it over and over again and get very good at it and very efficient at it and then maybe move them into the one-offs. And so, you know, again, I'm always trying to kind of, you know, stay ahead of the curve and grow and uh, this is certainly working out. I'd like to, honestly, my legacy, I think I'd like to see my, uh, my son and my daughter take over the business. Um, you know, I've got, uh, I've got some very, very dedicated, loyal, uh, employees and which are great friends I, it's hard to call them employees I've got so many wonderful people that have been here for decades and uh, you know I would like to make sure that they're all you know obviously taken care of and that but uh, to pass something down to my kids they they are a lot smarter I think than me they have a lot more advantage than I think I did because I grew up with nothing uh, I had no dad when I was growing up and to have the same woman in my life for 32 years uh, their mom and uh, we've been married for 30 years this year to uh, show them how to, to find somebody you love and never let them go and take care of your family and your friends and, uh, you know, and to grow. And, and this is really, it's been a charming life and I wouldn't, wouldn't trade anything for anything. So uh, I would love for them to have that same experience that I've had.